будем Angelicity na isang libo sa madaan ari na put apat. Natapos niya ang kanyang pag-aaral ng sekundarya sa Mother of Good Counsel Seminary sa San Fernando, Pampanga na isang libo sa madaan ari na put walo. Sa San Jose Seminary, Loyola Heights, Quezon City, tinapos niya ang kanyang pag-aaral sa kolehiyo na isang libo sa madaan pitong put dalawa at doon din niya tinapos ang pag-aaral ng teologiya no isang libo sa madaan pitong protwalo. Puspos ng biyaya ng bukasyon, matapos sa kanyang paghuhubog sa loob ng seminaryo, si Victor ay naordenan bilang isang ganap na pari no ikalima ng Nobyembre, isang libo sa madaan pitong protwalo. Ito ang araw kung saan siya ay naging ganap na sugo ni Kristo. Hindi naglaon, siya ay naglingkod sa Our Lady of the Pillar Parish, morong bilang kura paroko noong taong isang libo siyam na daan pitumpot siyam. Pagkatapos ay napadistino rin siyang kura paroko sa mga sumusunod na parokya. St. Catherine of Alexandria Parish, Bagak, noong isang libo siyam na daan walumput isa. St. Francis of Assisi Parish, Limay noong isang libo siyam na daan walumput anim. Our Lady of Lords Parish, Kolo Dinalupihan noong isang libo siyam na daan siyam na put isa. 
St. Joseph Shrine and Cathedral Parish, Balanga, noong isang libo siyam na daan siyam na putpito. Holy Rosary Parish, Orani, noong dalwan libot dalawa. St. Michael Parish, Orion, noong dalwan libot anim. At St. Dominic de Guzman Parish, Abukay, noong dalwan libot labing isa. Sa Reven Reverendo Padre Victor Ocampo ay naging pastol din sa iba't ibang mukha ng ministeryo ng simbahan. Taong isang libo, siyam na daan pitumput walo hanggang dalawan libo, siya ay nangasiwa sa catechetical ministry ng diocese ng Balanga, gayon din ng biblical apostolate mula noong taong isang libo, siyam na daan walumput lima at ng family life noong dalawang libo labing isa hanggang dalawang libo labing dalawa. Naging administrador siya ng diocese ng Balanga noong ikalima ng Nobyembre dalawang libo siyam hanggang sa ikawalo ng Hulyo dalawang libo at sampo. Naging direktor din siya ng Adorasyon Nocturna Filipina noong dalawang libo labing apat hanggang dalawang libo labing lima at naging Chancellor ng Diocese ng Balanga mula noong dalawan libong walo hanggang sa siya ay mahirang na obispo ng Gumaka. Sa pagdaan ng mga araw, unti-unting nahinog si Reverendo Monsignor Victor C. Ocampo sa pagharap ng mga panibagong hamon upang maging handang harapin ang tungkuling maging ama ng mga pari at mananampalataya ng Diocese ng Gumaka. Grasya ng Diyos ang nagtadhana ng lahat. Noong ikang labing dalawa ng Hunyo, dalawang libo labing lima, nang ipahayag ng Santo Papa ang kanyang bagong tungkulin bilang obispo ng diocese ng Gumaka. Ikalabing dalawa at siyam naman ay ng Agosto, dalawang libo labing lima, tinanggap niya ang orden ng pagka-obispo sa St. Joseph Shrine and Cathedral, Balanga, Bataan. Ipinagdiwang niya sa simpleng paraan ang kanyang ikapitumput isang kaarawan noong ikaanim ng Marso taong kasalukuyan. Sampung araw matapos ito, ikalabing anim ng Marso, siya ay binawian ng buhay upang bumalik sa Panginoong may kapal. Brothers and sisters, let us ask the Lord to grant us the gift of His loving consolation as we entrust to Him our dear Bishop Victor. Let us all stand and join the entrance hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. In this hour of grief and sorrow, which is also an hour of hope and gratitude, let us entrust to our Father in heaven the soul of our dear victor. Let us ask the good Lord to grant us the gift of his loving consolation. In the waters of baptism, Victor died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In baptism, Victor was clothed with a white garment as an outward sign of his Christian dignity. Now he brings that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. In life, Victor cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Victor received the sign of the cross. Now, may he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. O oh God, almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Victor, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if in the eyes of men Indeed, they be punished. Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise the little, they shall be greatly blessed. Because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificed, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and this care is with his elect. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Pastor ko'y Panginoong Diyos, hindi ako magdarahop. Pastor ko'y Panginoong Diyos, hindi ako A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with Him through a death like His, we shall also be united with Him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with Him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin, if then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves life will lose it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? The fa Father saved me from this hour, but it was for this purpose 
that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear fellow children of God, we remember September 3, 2015, when most of us saw Bishop Victor Ocampo being installed as the third bishop of Gumaca. Now, after more than eight years of pastoral ministry in this diocese, we again see him in this cathedral to pray for his eternal rest in the bosom of the Father after suffering from a heart attack at the age of 71. Each of us has his own memory of Bishop Vic. Many of us were en entertained by his jokes. Some of them are etched in our memory since we asked him every time we meet to repeat them and he would gladly oblige. Sadly, we will miss those jokes. Some of us would remember his favorite morning ritual of drinking pure calamansi juice from 23 to 25 pieces. Or you might have seen him proudly show his green fishnet worn at his back to prevent sweating. All of this will just be memories. Yes, memories of him that after some time will also be forgotten. But the gospel we have just read for this occasion tells us of another reality that stays. And it not only stays, it even bears much fruit. And in touch with the reality we are now facing with Bishop Vic, Jesus was speaking of death. We avoid speaking of death as much as possible. It reveals our vulnerability, our limitedness, our powerlessness, and our end. Have we ever asked ourselves why we say death is the doorway to heaven, yet we also fear death and postpone it with mechanical instruments in the hospital just to keep us from dying? On the other hand, Jesus talks of death as the hour for him to be glorified. He uses the picture of the grain of wheat that falls to the ground. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Falling to the ground and dying to oneself is an invitation to be to live fully. Living fully means dying to my own desires. It is renouncing what I want in favor of what God wants. How is this possible? Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but the gospel tells us of Jesus. Jesus said, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. And this brings us to the second reading. We cannot die to ourselves without Christ. Left to our own capacities, we cannot deny ourselves simply by willpower. We suffer burnout. That is why we need Christ. There is a connection between self-renunciation, which is a way of dying to oneself, and Christ, especially in the sacraments. Something wonderful happens every time someone, either a child or an adult, is baptized. 
According to St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of God the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. In the first part of the Gospel, we heard Jesus saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Part of this glorification is the role played by the suffering, death, and resurrection. Yet after three days of mourning came the joy of the resurrection. In the latter part of the Gospel, we heard the sentence, As Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we, we might too, so we too might walk in the newness of life. In other words, baptism brings new life. We are speaking of bap baptism as bringer of new life. This new life is activated every day as we make decisions, both ordinary and extraordinary. Take for example the dialogue between a mother and daughter talking about the impending coming of a type of a typhoon, talking about impending it is impending coming. And what is that? Sabi ng nanay, anak, may darating na ma malakas na bagyo. Pero wag kang magalala. Hindi tayo pababayaan ng Diyos. Nakita na ba ng bata ang Diyos? Hindi. Narinig niya ang Diyos? Hindi. Nahipo niya ang Diyos? Hindi. Pero naniwala siya na hindi siya pababayaan ng Diyos sapagat yan ang sabi ng nanay. Another example is that of a child. He was given an orange by his classmates. Sabi ng mga klase, O oh, ayan, iyo na yan, kainin mo na. Ang sabi ng bata, hindi, dadalhin ko ito sa bahay. At bakit naman, meron akong dalawang kapatid na nasa bahay. Kakainan, kakainin namin ito tatlo. Mas masaya kung tatlo kami kumakain. Yan po, suffering, dying to oneself even in small ways, pero totoo at napakalaki ng dating. Punta naman tayo ngayon kay Bishop Bick. Si Bishop Bick ay natataandaan bilang payak at mababang loob. Hindi siya madaling magalit at kung may dapat na pagsabihan, ay ginagawa niya ito sa malumanay na paraan. Mahal ni Bishop Bick ang mga pari kahit sila ay nagkamali at hanggang makakaya ay nais niyang unawain kung ano man ang pagkakamali na kanilang nagawa sapagat ito ay tanda ng kanyang pagiging ama. At kung sakasakali na siya ay nakataas ng, ano, ng kanyang tinig sa mismo ang humihingi ng humihing siya ang nagsosorry doon sa taong kanyang napagtasan ng tinig siya ay mag-aang kasama at hindi ka matatakot na lumapit at hindi ka maiilang sabi ng isang madre siya ay very thoughtful sa pagpapadala ng Biblical Reflections. Ganun din, thoughtful. Halimbawa, pag siya ay pinuntahan sa kanyang birthday, pupuntahan din niya ito pag yung taong naman yun ang may birthday din. Natatanda na marami ang kanyang word watch. Ito ay pang-araw-araw na pagninilay ng salita ng Diyos at may ilig siyang mag-quote ng biblical passages from memory. Lagi siyang present sa mga mahalagang events ng diocese at iba pang mga pagdiriwang. Siya ay isang mabuting katiwala kung ang pag-usapan ay ang pera. Siya ay transparent sa lahat ng mga ibinigay sa kanyang mga donations. Mga bagay, mga memories na mananatili sa mga sa puso ng mga taong kanyang nakasalamuha 
dito sa ating diocesis ng Gumaka. Ito ay mananatili at ito'y tanda ng kanyang pag-aalay ng kanyang buhay dito sa ating diocesis. Kaya sa'y mananatili sa ating panalangin at nating ipagdadasal na sana'y sa'y tanggapin ng Diyos sa kanyang kariyan. At bilang panghuli, may tanong, sino ang mag-aalaga kay Labs? Kung may nag sino itong si Labs? Ito yung kanyang asong si Labrador. Mapagmahal siya sa mga tao, mapagmahal din siya sa mga hayop. Kaya kung may nagnanais mag-volunteer na mag-alaga, tatanawin itong utang na loob ng ating mahal na obispo. Pero higit sa lahat, sa ating pagdadala sa, sa kanya dito sa ating dito sa simbahan upang ihatid sa huling hantungan tayo ay nakatitiyak na hindi siya pababayaan ng Diyos makikita ng Diyos ang kanyang mapagmahal na puso mababang puso at ito ang magiging dahilan upang siya tanggapin sa kanyang kaharian paalam bisabik Marami kang mga memories na mananatili sa aming puso. Pagdasal mo rin kami na sana'y maging mabait din kami sa aming kapwa. Na sana'y maging mababa ang aming puso at higit sa lahat ay mapagmahal na katulad mo. Amen. Please all stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to his our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Victor received the light of Christ. He scattered the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Victor was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give, give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Victor seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Victor. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Victor, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Victor, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please all stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please be seated.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Victor may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Sa pagkakataon pong ito, Mapapakinggan natin ang mga mensahe mula sa ating minamahal na Santo Papa Francisco na babasahin ni Reverendo Padre Galan Fontanilla at susundan ang pagpapaliwanag ng mensahe ng Santo Papa na pangungunahan ng minamahal na nunsyo. Ganun din, mensahe mula kay Arsobispo Gilbert Garcera at susundan ang mensahe mula kay Reverendo Monsignor Ramon Oriarte at mensahe mula sa kinatawan ng pamilya ng minamahal na obispo Victor Ocampo. Apostolic Nunciature, Manila, Philippines, Manila, 21st of March 2023. Reverend Father Ramon de Oriarte, Vicar General and Moderator Curie, Diocesan Curia Janssensory Office, Diocesan Pastoral Formation Center, Barangay Rosario, Gumaca, Quezon. Dear Father Oriarte, the Secretary of State of the Holy See has asked the Apostolic Nunciature to transmit to the Diocese of Gumaca the following message. His Holiness Pope Francis was deeply saddened to learn of the untimely death of Bishop Victor C. Ocampo, and he sends heartfelt condolences and the assurance of his spiritual closeness to the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the Diocese of Gumaca. With gratitude for his years of priestly and episcopal ministry of proclaiming the gospel and serving the people entrusted to his care, His Holiness willingly commends Bishop Ocampo's soul to the boundless mercy of Christ, the Good Shepherd. To all who mourn his loss in the sure hope of the resurrection, the Holy Father, cordially imparts his blessing as a pledge of strength and peace in the Lord. From Cardinal Pietro Parolin, the Secretary of State. I wish to express my deepest sympathy to the Dais of Gumaca 
on the death of Bishop Victor C. Ocampo. Sincerely yours in Christ, signed by Charles J. Brown, Apostolic Nuncio. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have just heard the letter which contains the expression of condolences by our Holy Father Pope Francis at the passing away of Bishop Victor Ocampo, Bishop of Gumaca since 2015. For me as his representative, that is a representative of Pope Francis here in the Philippines, I wanted to come here to Gumaca this morning to be with you, to be especially with his family, who mourns the loss of their brother, to be with you, the priests and people, the religious of the Diocese of Gumaca, as you mourn the loss of your beloved Bishop Vic, Bishop Victor. His name Victor means the one who is victorious. That is what a victor is, the one who wins, the one who conquers. In baptism, Victor shared in the victory of Christ. He was baptized into Christ's victory over death. And now as his earthly life finishes, he shares in that victory, again, the victory of Christ over death. So it's our responsibility to pray for him, to thank God for the gift of his service here in the Diocese of Gumaca, which was expressed so beautifully so touchingly last night in this very cathedral in the beautiful tribute that we heard to Bishop Vic by many, many people. We need to pray for him and also to pray for his diocese, the Diocese of Gumaca, which now awaits, of course, a new bishop. In the period after a bishop's death, the diocese is described as sede vacante. That means that the sede, the seat, the chair, is empty. And if you look into the sanctuary to your left, you see his chair. It's empty. That chair will be filled when a new bishop is appointed for Gumaca by the Holy Father, Pope Francis. But in the interim period between now and that moment, the diocese will be administered by a diocesan administrator. In most cases, the diocesan administrator is chosen by the College of Consultors of the diocese. But if the College of Consultors is unable to choose a diocesan administrator within eight days after the see becomes vacant, then the responsibility devolves on the Metropolitan Archbishop, who in your case is the Most Reverend Gilbert Garcera, Archbishop of Lipa. So it will be his responsibility to appoint your diocesan administrator who will administer the diocese until Pope Francis names a new bishop for the Diocese of Gumaca. So for me, as your apostolic nuncio, I wanted to be close with you to express the closeness of Pope Francis at this moment, his concern for all of you, as I said earlier, especially for the family of the deceased bishop, but for all of you during this time. We thank God for the gift of his ministry, the gift of his jokes, which even I, as the nuncio, was able to experience on more than one occasion, the gift of his beautiful simplicity, but principally the gift of his example of faith. Your bishop, Bishop Victor Ocampo, was a man who believed, and that faith radiated from him and was a beautiful example to all of us who had the privilege and the pleasure of knowing him. So now, at this moment, I will turn the microphone over to your Metropolitan Archbishop, Gilbert Garcera, for an important announcement. Office of the Archbishop, Archdiocese of Lipa. Decree the appointment of the diocesan administrator of the Diocese of Gumaca. I, the Most Reverend Gilbert A. Garcera, Metropolitan Archbishop of Lipa, 
by virtue of the provision contained in Canon 421, number 2, of the Code of Canon Law, do hereby appoint the Reverend Father Ramon D. Oriarte as a diocesan administrator of the Diocese of Gumaca, all things to the contrary notwithstanding, given at the Archdiocesan Chancery of Lipa on March 25, 2023. Gilbert A. Garcera, Archbishop of Lipa. Corpus Meum Isang salitang Latin na nakikita po nating nakalagay sa coat of arms ni Bishop Victor Ocampo. Ito po ang kanyang motong hinango sa magandang balita ni San Lucas, chapter 22, verse 19. Matatandaan, noong haling hapunan, dumampot siya ng tinapay, matapos magpasalamat sa Diyos, ay kanyang pinagpirapreso at ibinigay sa kanila at sinabi niya, Ito ang aking katawan na ibibigay para sa inyo. Gawin niyo ito bilang pag-alaala sa akin. Para po sa mga nakakilala kay Bishop Beat, ang moto pong ito ay hindi na natiling mithiin o pangarap sapagkat sa kanyang buhay, nasaksihan ang totoong pag-aalay ng buhay sa Diyos at sambayanan. Ako po ay buhay na saksi sa katotohanan ito. Kaya nga po noong mag-celebrate si Bishop Beek ng 40th Sacerdotal Anniversary, sa, kan sa aking interview, akin pong sinabi ang aking pagkakilala sa kanya. Sabi ko po, Si Bishop Bick ay isang masayahing tao, isang simpleng pari, at isang madasaling obispo. Nakita ko sa kanya ang kanyang pagsusumikap tumalima sa kalooban ng Diyos at ialay ang sarili ng buong puso sa kanya. Si Bishop Bick po noong buhay pa, ay mahilig pong mag-quote sa Bible. Nakakamangha nga po sapagkat memorya po niya ang mga lines at ang mga eksaktong chapters and verses. Kaya siguro, nung marap po siya sa Diyos, nag-quote din po siya ng Bible at ginamit niya ang ikalawang sulat ni San Pablo kay Timoteo. Siguro po, sinabi niya sa Panginoon, Dumating na ang oras ng pagpano ko sa buhay na ito. Puspusang akong lumaban sa paligsahan. Natapos ko na ang dapat kong takbuhin. Nanatili akong tapat sa pananampalataya. Kakamtan ko ang korona ng tagumpay. Ang Panginoon na siyang makatarungang hukom ang magpuputong sa akin ng korona sa araw na iyon. Naniniwala po ako na tinanggap ng Diyos ang kanyang pag-aalay. Kaya nga, ipinagkaloob sa kanya ang korona ng tunggumpay at ngayoy kapiling na siya ng Panginoong Diyos sa kaharian. Kaya nga po, nararapat lamang po na magpasalamat tayo sa Panginoon sa pagbibigay kay Bishop Bick ng malaking biyaya ng buhay na walang hanggan. Magpasalamat din po tayo na nag, sa Diyos na nagkaloob sa atin ng banal na obispo na naging buhay na larawan ng pagmamahal ng Diyos. On behalf of the clergy, 
religious and the laity of the Diocese of Gumaca, I would like to express also my sincerest gratitude to the following. To His Holiness, Pope Francis, for his message of condolences. To His Excellency, the Papal Nuncio to the Philippines, Archbishop Charles Brown, for celebrating the funeral mass for Bishop Victor Ocampo today. So, Arsubispo ng Arsidiosis ng Lipa, Archbishop Gilbert Garcera, sa kanyang patuloy na pagabay sa atin simula ng pumanaw si Bishop Big. Sa Obispo ng Diosis ng San Pablo, ang ikalawang Obispo ng Gumaka, Bishop Ben Famadico, sa kanyang malalim na pagnidilay at humiliya. Sa unang Obispo ng Gumaka, Bishop Emilio Marquez, sa kanyang agarang pagpapakita ng pagdamay. Sa mga obispong naririto at iba pang mga obispong nakiramay. Sa mga government officials, sa paumuno ni Gover Governor Dr. Helen Tan at Mayor Webster Ditargo, sa kanilang pagtulong sa security, traffic at iba pa. Sa mga paring naririto mula sa iba't ibang dioceses, mga madre, kaibigan at bayan ng Diyos sa inyong suporta at pagdarasal at sa mga kapatid at kamag-anak ni Bishop B sa, kanyang, sa kanilang bukas palad na pag-aalay kay Bishop B. Sa inyo pong lahat, maraming maraming salamat po at pagpalainawa kayo ng Panginoon. Sa kahulihan, nais ko din pong magpasalamat kay Bishop Big. Alam po namin na ayaw na ayaw niyang siya'y papasalamatan. Subalit, sa pagkakataong ito, nais po namin sabihin ang nilalaman ng aming puso. Bishop Big, salamat po sa iyong kabaitan at malawak na pangunawa, lalo tigit sa aming mga pari. Salamat din po sa iyong magandang halimbawa ng kasimplihan at kababaang loob na dapat naming tularan. Salamat din po sa iyong buong pusong pag-aalay na inyong buhay para sa paglilingkod sa Diyosis ng Gumaka. Sa inyo pong pag sa Diyos, huwag po ninyo kaming kalimutang ipagdasal. Kilalang kilala po ninyo kami, mga pari, alam po ninyo ang aming kahinaan, ang aming kakulangan, ang aming pangangailangan. Ibulong po ninyo kami sa Diyos na kami tulungan na maging mabubuting mga apostol sa aming kawan. Idalangin din po ninyo ang Diyosis ng Gumaka na sana ang ating samasamang pinangarap ay unti-unti nating maabot. At sa kahuli-hulihan, ipagdasal din po ninyo kaming lahat na nagmamahal sa iyo, na basbasa ng Panginoon na maging karapat-dapat sa kanyang pagmamahal. Tulungan din sana kami ng Panginoon na buong pusong makapag-alay ng sarili sa Diyos at, mara at masabi rin namin sa Kanya, Hoc es enim corpus meum. Pagkatapos po ng, ng seremonyas, ang lahat po ng mga pari ng Diyosis ng Gumaka ay pupulungi ni Archbishop Garcera sa Blessed Sacrament Chapel para po magdesisyon sa araw at oras ng Christmas at iba pang pagpapaliwanag tungkol po sa role ng uh, diocesan administrator. Salamat po. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. 
Ako po si Eromin, ang pinakabata sa magkakapatid. Pito po kami. Sa ngalan po ng aming pamilya o kampo family, kami ay lubos na nagpapasalamat sa inyong lahat na nakipagdalamhati sa amin sa pagkasumakabilang buhay ng ating Bishop Victor Ocampo. Magmula sa mga dioseses ng Gumaka, Balanga at San Fernando, Pampanga, ay aming nakita at nadama ang inyong lungkot at pagmamahal kay Bishop Vic na naglingkod ng 38 taon bilang isang kura paroko sa Bataan at pitong taon bilang isang kura paroko sa Gumaka. At sa aming paniniwala ay nagampanan niya ang kanyang moto nung siya ay inordinahan bilang pari na unless a grain of wheat falls deep into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Mula po sa John chapter 12, verse 24. Sa aking pagkabata, ay hindi ko gaanong nakasama si Bishop. Kasi nung ako ay pinanganak, ay nasa minor seminary na siya. At nung ako ay 11 years old na, palang, ay naging pari na siya. At sabi kami sa aming pamilya na siya ay makasama. Subalit alam namin na may mas mag malaki at mabigat siyang misyon sa bayan ng Diyos na nakaatang sa kanyang balikat. At ito ay malugod at masaya rin naming tinanggap. Siya ay naging mabuti at uwarang alimbawa sa aming magkakapatid. At noong siya ay naging pari, ay hindi niya kami nakalimutan at palaging isinasama sa kanyang mga misa at panalangin. Ito ay aming nasasaksiyan kapag kami ay tumatawag, nagtitext at nagbi-message sa kanya. At kapag may nagdiriwang ng kan kanilang kaarawan at anumang okasyon, ay nagbi-message siya at sinasabing kasama kami sa kanyang misa. Malayo man siya, at hindi, ay hindi ito naging balakid bilang isang kuya, kapatid at pinsan. Sabi ko nga sa aking mga kapatid at sa inyo din naman na ngayong natapos na ang misyon ni Bishop Vic dito sa daigdig at siya ay lumisan na para pumunta at bumalik sa ating Diyos, Ama, ay palagi na natin siyang makakasama in spirit. At alam nating tayo ay kanyang inaalala at palaging binabanggit sa ating Diyos at Panginoong Eso Kristo. Maraming maraming salamat po at mahal na mahal namin kayo, Bishop Pig. Para po sa ilang mga paalala, para po sa kayusan ng ating pananghalian, ang mga obispo po ay tutungo sa parish refectory, ang pamilya ni Bishop Big at mga kaibigan mula sa bataan at mga drivers ng obispo ay sa Kizon Hall sa kilid ng parish rectory. Ang mga bisitang government officials, mga pari mula sa diocese ng Balanga at iba't ibang diocese ay sa second floor Marazigan Hall. Ang klero ng gumaka, mga madre, relihiyoso at mga bisitang mula sa iba't ibang lugar ay sa Holy Child Jesus College Gymnasium sa gawing kanan paglabas ng pangunahing pinto ng simbahan. Ang mga representatives ng mga delegado mula sa iba't ibang parokya ng diocese ay maaaring kunin ang kanilang pack lunch sa harap ng kumbento sa gilid ng bagong Blessed Sacrament Chapel. At bilang panghuli, 
para po sa mga minamahal na pari, mangyaring iwan nyo na lamang po ang inyong mga vestments sa inyong upuan. Maraming salamat po. Please all stand for the prayer of commentation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Victor, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Victor again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Prayer of commendation, into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Victor in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Victor in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to the place of rest. Only the bishops and immediate family will enter into the place of burial of our beloved bishop. Please remain standing.
Our brother Victor has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with Victor. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. This is the will of the one who sent me, says the Lord, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it up on the last day. Prayer over the place of committal. Lord Jesus, by your own three days in the tomb, you made holy the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant to Victor may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, and in your light will see light and know the splendor of God, who you, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Pray for beloved Victor to our Lord Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. The man in me will live even if he dies. And every living person who puts his faith in me will never suffer eternal death. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you, you wept at the death of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Response. Lord, hear our prayer. You raise the dead to life. Give our beloved Victor eternal life. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. You promised paradise the thief who repented. Bring our beloved Victor to the joys of heaven. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Victor, who was in baptism, anointed with the oil of salvation, Give him fellowship with all your saints. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table of your heavenly kingdom. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our beloved Victor. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life, we hope. We ask this in faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, listen to our prayers for our beloved Victor. By his Christian faith, he was united with all your believing people. Now in love and mercy, give him a place with your angels and saints. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon him. May he him. rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.